We have covered the work of Hugh Nisbet in episode 36. Today we shall review 1895 The Great Secret, A Tale of Tomorrow. The story begins on board the Rockhampton, a cruiser carrying a load of passengers trying to get away from it all. Among these is Philip Mortlake, whose name and reputation have been dragged through the mud by his aesthetic vile ex-wife, trying to get a divorce. Philip agrees with everything to get her off his back, but is massively disillusioned with humanity and women in general. While on board he meets Adela, who also seems tired of living. By and by, the two become more and more friendly towards each other, even as the passengers spread the rumour that a gang of anarchists are on board, intent on blowing them all up. Captain Nelson tries to stop the spread of such rumours, but Adela knows they are not merely rumours. In fact, the leader of the anarchist cell is her own husband, the infamous bomb maker Dr. Fernandez. She tells Philip, who sees the captain preparing for a siege of the ship in secret, but then an envoy of the anarchist comes along, demanding the ship, and not even an hour later the dining room is blown up. Philip finds Adela on top of the mutilated body of a woman who is dressed very much like her, so she assumes her husband will now consider her dead. The anarchists search the ship, but somehow miss both Adela and Philip hiding in the hold, as well as Captain Nelson and some of the mates and other men. After throwing the bodies into the ocean and searching the cabins, the survivors sneak into one of the cabins already searched through, reasoning they will not look for it again. Here they are cooped up and making secret expeditions along the ship at night, and seeing the sloppy way in which the anarchists and Atoll took over as captain. Fernandez wants to use the ship for the dark work of anarchy, and he intends to find an anarchist colony on an island just unpleasant enough to where the people won't actually like being there. But just then the ship is rammed into some rocks, due to Anatole's poor steering. Only six anarchists manage to swim to a nearby island, including three noble women so bored with life they join the anarchist organization. Fernandez, Anatole and the great hulking brute Dennis. Philip, Adela and the other survivors arrive on the island and hide in a cave. But there they find the dead anarchist they just seen drown in the ocean, alive but also dead. It turns out they never actually survived the bombing of the dining room. And despite eating, sleeping, etc, Philip, Adela, Nelson and the others were dead the whole time. Then a small girl comes along whom Adela had seen in her dreams, who calls her mother. She had had a daughter who died after a day, but the girl is her grown up while also being dead. Then Hesperia, an ancient spirit, comes about to take them through the river Styx, that they may be young and deaf forever. It is a rather poor decision to grant them a semi-immortal, semi-ghostly status halfway through the book, as they themselves get to face almost no adversity afterwards. They simply go through perfect utopian memorial recreations of ancient cities, communing with the ancient dead from whose memories they are fashioned. But since everyone here is perfect, they don't really do anything but talk vague philosophy about being good. The only thing Philip and Adela really do here is to get married. However, we still follow the group of Dr. Fernandez. First, their travails on the island and the growing love between Anatole and Eugene counters the Bergamont. In the end, Eugene and Anatole sneak off, while Fernandez and the others are rescued by Whaler. But Fernandez is a bastard, so he poisons the entire crew and steals the ship. Only this ship also sinks, and Fernandez and Dennis share a boat with one of the noble ladies, who the two kill to suck her blood kept company by the bloated corpses of the captain and crew, and also a very real shark. This in contrast to the biggest worry of Anatole and Eugene being to find a priest to marry them. The novel ends with Philip and Adela trying to free Philip's ex-wife from the evil spirits and inspire her to be a wicked evil shrew, but only do so with the help of a Bolognius of Tiana. The after-death bits can drag as nothing happens in them really, but at least he still gave us other far grislier or more adventurous segments to follow in between.